So we've released thumbnail tutorials before, but in this updated video, I'll show you the latest process, including the cool new free design tools that we recommend so that you can learn how to make a YouTube thumbnail that looks professional and helps you drive more traffic to your videos quick and easy. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you grow an audience and scale your revenue with online video. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Now, YouTube thumbnails are one of the most overlooked elements of YouTube optimization. You could have the world's best video, but if no one clicks it in search results or in the suggested feed on YouTube, then you'll get no views. And all that hard work is just gonna go to waste. Fortunately though, there are some simple and free ways to easily create effective thumbnails. So in this video, we're gonna run through a full custom YouTube thumbnail tutorial, including the latest tools and processes that we recommend to create professional looking thumbnails fast. Now I wanna stress here that you don't need to be using apps or programs like Photoshop. If you can and you know how to use it, then by all means, go for it. But for most people, this can just be a huge time sink and you can get awesome results just using simple free software alternatives. Now back in the early days of this channel, Mike, my brother and business partner actually used to create most of our thumbnails just using Keynote. But these days there are some awesome online tools that are more accessible and do an even better job. Now for this, we used to recommend Canva, but we've since found Snapper, which is a similar alternative that does have a few less restrictions on exports, but also some super powerful design options and templates in there as well. So it's now our top recommendation for creating designs like YouTube thumbnails and you can get everything you need completely free. So for this tutorial, we'll be using Snapper, but if you are using Canva or something else, Photoshop even, then just follow along because the steps are gonna be mostly the same for you. Now, for anyone that's already familiar with some of our other videos, you'll know that we use and that we recommend a service called Placeit as well for creating logo animations, animated text, animated video intros. Well, they also now support creating YouTube thumbnails as well. So if you already have a Placeit subscription, or if you're someone who is looking for some animated titles and those sorts of things to use in your videos, then place it could be another option to use for your thumbnails here too. Okay, so getting to the thumbnail tutorial, the first thing we're going to need is a photo to use with it. So for all of our thumbnails, we'll usually have my face on there somewhere. I might be pointing or smiling or uh, holding up a product or a service if that's what the video is about. But the idea here is that you wanna try and build that familiarity with yourself if you're going to be in them. So using yourself in your thumbnail images, but also quickly helping your viewers decide if your video is for them. So if you're gonna be speaking about a specific product, hold it up if you've got it, or bring up some photos and those sorts of things of it so that your viewers can quickly see that that video is the one that they want to click. So I'm gonna go ahead now and pose for a couple of quick photos and then we'll jump across to the computer. Okay, so I'm over here now on the computer. I've got our video footage here opened inside of VLC player, which is a free media player on both Windows and on Mac. Now I'm just going through to find those pieces where I posed for those thumbnails, it was down here somewhere. And we wanna try and find a few different variations of those that we can save out as images to use in our thumbnail. So we just find the frame that we want, we pause the video, we come up here to video and choose snapshot. That will take that screenshot and save it to your pictures folder or my pictures if you're on Mac or PC. And you wanna scrub through, find all the different variations, all your different fancy poses that you might use. Video, snapshot. So you wanna go ahead and save those and then pick which one out of all of those that you're going to use in your thumbnail. From there, you wanna head over to Snapper. Now, if you already have an account, you can hit log in or you can choose get started for free. Just enter your name, email address, create a password and you're in. Now, just to show you, if we go over to the pricing area, you can use Snapper for free. It will give you access to 5,000 templates in there, 3 million HD photos to use, and it will give you three free downloads per month. Obviously, if you wanna go above that, then they've got really compelling plans for those as well. So I'm gonna go over to my dashboard because I'm already logged in here. And if you're not seeing this create a graphic page appear straight away, then just come up the top and choose create a graphic. 
and then you'll see this. So in here, you can see we've got presets for Facebook posts, for Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, and YouTube thumbnail. Now, if we click on YouTube thumbnail, and in here are some great templates so that you don't need to start from absolute zero with your designs. You can actually select any of these and customize them up for your YouTube video. So if there's any here that you already like the look of, then you can select one of these and start to customize it up. So let's say we pick this one here, then everything in here is editable. We can move the text around, we can change the fonts, change the colors, change the size, change the background picture. So there are some great templates that you can use. What we're gonna do for this tutorial is to start from scratch. So we're gonna go menu, create a graphic, It'll take us back to this page. Instead of using the YouTube thumbnail preset here of 1280 by 720, we're gonna make it a little bit higher quality than that and make it 1080p or 1920 by 1080. So this will still work for YouTube as a thumbnail image, but it'll actually let you create a higher quality image than what their preset template is here. So 1920 by 1080, let's go create. So now we have a blank canvas to work from here in Snapper. Now this is the image that we will be creating something very similar to our thumbnail that we've used for this exact video. So the first thing we're gonna start with is this background image here. So for that, we wanna go over to YouTube Let's go to our YouTube channel. We've got a videos, so bring up a heap of our videos, page like this. Now I'm just gonna take a screenshot of it. So on a Mac, I can hold down Command, Shift, and four. Or on Windows, you can open up the snipping tool. Then you can just draw out the area that you wanna take a screenshot of. Let's may as well capture the whole area here, down to about there. Let go of the mouse, and that has saved a screenshot on our desktop for us. So now we come back over here to Snapper. We wanna come up the top here to graphics. We're going to go to uploads. We'll select upload an image. And we're going to find that screenshot that we just saved for the background. Once that's uploaded, we can select that image and it's going to drop it into our canvas area here. And now we're just gonna scale it up to make it really, really big. So it covers all of that white area. And I'm gonna drag it down a bit. And at the top here, we have a little rotate button. So if I click and hold on that and move to the left or to the right, you can see that we can rotate this around. So I'm gonna put a little bit of an angle on it, maybe something like this. Now let's reposition it up the top here, making sure that it's totally covered the background area here. Now we're gonna click on it so it's selected and we're gonna come up here to opacity and we are going to lower the opacity or to fade this out because it was pretty faint in our other thumbnail that I showed you. So we hardly wanna see it. Now we wanna come back up the top here to background. And in here, there's lots of photos and things that you can use inside of your thumbnails. There's patterns that you can use as well. You can obviously upload your own as we've just done, or you can pick a color if you wanna have a color overlay. But for us here, we're gonna go patterns and just pick a pattern with some random colors of a gradient or a fade effect, even something like this one here. I'm gonna select this and you can see now because we'd faded out our image, we've now been able to bring some color through here. Now we can customize this up as well. So you can see it's pretty green here. If we come up the top now to effects, then we can darken that down if we wanna make it darker. We can come down here to hue and slide this across and change the color. So you can see we can add a bit more blue in there. We can make it a bit brighter if we want lower the brightness so you can easily change up the look and feel to dial in what you're after just using some of these basic settings here and see that we've got that light down the bottom corner if we want it lighter over this side we can come back over here to background and just hit the flip horizontal and that's now flipped it to the bottom there or if we want it up the top we can hit the other one flip vertical and it's now brighter up the top corner here Okay, so next up, we're gonna bring in the image of me. So we'll come across here to graphics. We'll again go to upload an image. So we'll go through and find the image that we want to use. We'll select open, so that file gets uploaded. And then once that's done, if we click on our image here, then that will bring it in to our project. Now, once it's actually in here, you can pick it up and you can move it around, you can scale it up and down, you can rotate it, but you actually can't crop it down from here. So if you do wanna crop it and remove a section, then you will need to do that up front. So I'm gonna click on this and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. We're gonna come back across here to graphics. And this time, instead of just clicking on it to add it in, I can come up to the little corner here, crop and rotate. So we're gonna crop off all of this extra stuff here that we don't want in there. Let's crop it off about there. Crop off some of this extra stuff. 
and we will hit apply, accept these changes, and that's then created a new version of that cropped file for us. So now we'll select the new one to bring it into our project. And with that image selected there, a new feature inside of Snapper here is their background removal. So if we select this now, that's going to go ahead and analyze our image, and it's going to try and remove the background from that for us. So you can see that's actually done a pretty good job. It has left the chair in there, but I don't see that as being too much of an issue because we were able to crop that off as we scale this bigger and move it off to the side of the frame. So we're going to scale this up probably to around there somewhere, move across to the side, maybe we'll make it a bit bigger. There we go, somewhere around there. So that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to add in some text. So we'll come up here to text, we'll go add a heading, get a little text box here, we can move it to where we want it, but we'll just double click on it to be able to edit it. So I'm going to type in thumbnail, we can select the text in here and we can come over here and adjust the font. So for us, our font that we use at Primal Video is Oswald and bold. Now we can make that bigger, just using the up arrow here, or we can actually just type in a number if you know how big roughly you'd like to make it. Then we can stretch this out here so that it fits inside that box. Now we'll make this font here white. So again, we've selected it, come back over here, and let's make it white because we will have a box or a color in behind it. So we'll have thumbnail. Now, if you select your text here and come up the top to duplicate, you can create a copy of that layer. So if you're gonna create multiple text boxes or add multiple words this way, it will save you having to set them all up from scratch each time. So thumbnail tutorial, and we might add one more in there. Duplicate it again. Updated. Now it's updated, we'll probably make that smaller because it's not as important. The most important piece of this thumbnail is the words that say thumbnail tutorial. Updated. We'll probably also put an exclamation mark on the end of it there. And we can move these around to where we want them. Okay, now I'm going to add in some color in behind them so that text becomes much easier to read. So for that, I'm going to add in a shape. Let's pick a rectangle. Doesn't really matter. Could go a square if you wanted and resize it. But I'm going to bring it over here, somewhere around here, and stretch this out so that it covers our text. Maybe make it a little bit shorter here. And then we're going to come up here and move that shape behind our text. And we do that using these little tools here move layer back or move layer forward. So we want to move this one back. You might need to click this a few times so that it actually ends up behind our text. And then we can further adjust the size of the box so that it fits how we would like. Now, when you're selecting your layers, if you do want some finer adjustment, you can use the keyboard arrow keys if you'd like to move things up and down and left and right in a more granular way than just clicking and dragging with the mouse. Okay, so that's looking pretty good there. I might just move the text out of the way so we can duplicate this background box. So we will hit duplicate on that one for the next one here. And maybe we'll duplicate it one more time for the bottom one. Let's move it down towards that. Okay, so let's move that text back up into the position that we want it in somewhere around there. Let's grab this next box. Let's send that to the back or move it to the back so it's behind our text. And let's position that where we want that one. And we'll resize that box, something like that. And likewise with the bottom one here. Now with this bottom one here, instead of just being the gray as well, we could change the color of it. And maybe we make it our primal video blue. Maybe what we might do is just make our background a little bit darker as well. So if we select on our background, then we've got our opacity here. We can probably fade that out a little bit more. So just some minor tweaks and adjustments to make the text stand out. Then we'll come back over here to effects and maybe we'll just darken this down a little bit. Now, the other thing we like to add in our thumbnail images is any graphics or any logos that will help people quickly work out what the video is about. So we're gonna to head to google.com. We're gonna search for YouTube logo. Now, normally I'd just come across two images here and find an image that matched and something that was okay for us to use in our videos. Something like this from Wikipedia, they're generally okay to use. But in this case, YouTube does provide their logo. So you can go brand resources here. It does clearly say though, that while this page is here to get you started, all uses need to be approved by YouTube. So technically you're supposed to get their approval for this. But I would say that we fall in the very low category here of using their logo. So I've downloaded the logo. We'll head back over to Snapper. We'll come at the top to graphics. Let's go to upload an image. 
Let's find their logo. We'll select on that and it's dropped in. And now we just put it where we'd want it. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Now, because this thumbnail that we're creating is a little meta and it's about thumbnails, we probably add a few others in there as well. So we'll head back over to our YouTube channel and I'll probably just take some more screenshots of some of these to showcase in there. So I'll zoom in on the page here using Command Plus or Control Plus if you're on Windows. And again, I'll be using Command Shift 4 or the snipping tool on Windows to bring up our screenshot tool to capture some of these thumbnail images. So we've got one there, might grab three of these. Now we head back to Snapper, Graphics, Upload an Image, select those three new ones and go Open. And let's select each one of them to drop them into our project. Now you might notice the quality on these isn't that great, but it's not gonna be a problem because we're gonna make them pretty small on here, just as example thumbnail images. So make them pretty small. Maybe I'll scale them all down at this point so they're all about the same size. And the third one as well. And we can pick them up and move them around. Maybe we'll have one over here somewhere. We'll move me across so we've got a bit more room. Select this one here and let's start moving it to the back. Keep clicking it. There we go. That's so behind my head. Now, if we select that thumbnail, we can rotate it a little bit just so it stands out a little bit on there. And maybe we'll add a little thin border around the outside of this as well. So, how we do that is that we have to do it by adding another shape. So, if we add a shape, Let's come down here just to the empty shape. Click on that, drops it in our project here. Let's change the color to white and let's move it up near this box. We will rotate it as well. And then we just position it so that it fits on our image. Now I might make that box a little bit thinner and we'll want to send that border to the back as well. Move it back further. Keep clicking until it goes behind my head. So now we'll quickly do the same for the other two as well. Now I'll grab that border there first and I will duplicate that. So we don't have to keep recreating that to move it out of the way here first. Bring up the next one. So we want to have it about here. Let's straighten this back up and put it on top and we can move them back. And the same with the image itself. Keep clicking on this until it's back behind our picture. There we go. So we've got two in there. Let's do the same for the third one. Let's duplicate that border first and grab our third one, move it across. Maybe we'll put a bit of an angle on this one as well. Reposition the border on top of it and send it to the back. Okay, so now that we've got those graphic elements in there, we might just resize a few things just to make it all fit. And we'll move this across a little bit. Same with the box behind it. Let's bring the text and that shape on top of this thumbnail image. So we're going to bring those ones forward. And likewise with that background there as well, let's bring that forward. And maybe we'll move these over just a little bit as well so they're more central. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Once you've got it how you'd like it, remember to come up the top here to hit save. So you're not going to lose your hard work. And then when you're ready to add it onto your YouTube videos, you're just going to come up the top here to download. And then the one that I recommend you use here for your YouTube thumbnails is the Web Optimized JPEG. So I'll select on that and give your thumbnail a name. Let's call it YouTube Thumb and save that. And then you want to head over to your YouTube channel into the studio dashboard area, come down to videos, and then to the video that you want to add the thumbnail image on, press the little details or edit button here. And then down here, it says upload thumbnail. We're going to click on that, select your image and press open. And you can see our new thumbnail image is updated here. You just want to hit save to make sure that that is applied. So that's how easy it is to create great looking thumbnails for your YouTube videos just using Snapper. All right, so now that you've got your thumbnail template sorted, another powerful element of branding is animated titles and introductions to use in your videos. And I wanna stress that it is not as hard as you might think. And linked on screen is a video to help you with just that. And I'll see you in the next one.